Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Non-Farm Payrolls webinar uh, with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Uh, today's date is Friday the 5th of January 2018. The time has just gone 1.15pm uh, and we'll just be, we'll just be very shortly kicking off with the webinar itself. As always, uh, I must leave the risk warning uh, slides on the screen here for you, for you guys and girls to have a read through. Um, it essentially states Anything that is covered in this webinar is purely just my own personal opinion uh, and, and comments. I should not be taken as explicit uh, trading or investment advice. Uh, it's just common practice with all our all the, all the webinars that we hold here at CMC Market. So I'll leave those up on screen. Uh, you can have a quick read through those. It's all fairly straightforward. It's all quite short, and then we'll actually kick on properly with the webinar itself. Uh, just as um, as the, those slides are up on the screen, I'll have a quick talk about what we've seen uh, in financial markets uh, in the past 24 hours. Um, Wall Street, the United States uh, is uh, really kind of blazing the trail uh, for the bullish sentiment on global equities. Uh, another stellar finish in Wall Street last night, strong finish in Asia, Asia overnight, and we've seen record highs on the FTSE 100 today. We've also seen decent gains in the Eurozone as well too. Um, but the main uh, fact, the main focus of today's session, of course, is going to be non-farm payrolls, which, which will come out in about 13 minutes. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with our platform, we're about to, to locate our, our uh, market calendar, our economic calendar. On the trading platform, if you go to the Market Pulse tab, click on that. Fourth option down on the Market Pulse tab is the market calendar. Uh, on the market calendar, if you take a look here, what we can see is that it gives a breakdown of all the economic indicators that are due out um, for, the, for, for the day. Uh, it also gives a, run, a breakdown of what we expect, uh, what, what the actual figure was, what the forecast was, and what the previous was. Uh, taking a look here, scrolling down, down to the non farm payrolls figures, we can see here that we're expecting um, a for, for the month of December. Uh, 190,000 jobs are being added to the US payroll and that compares with the previous uh, month's reading of 228,000. We're expecting the unemployment rate to hold steady at 4.1% and on top of that uh, in terms of average earnings on a multi month basis we're expecting average earnings to tick up by 0.3% and that compares with the previous month's increase of 0.2% and on the wages front on the year on year basis our average earnings are expected to hold steady at 2.5 percent and also looking at uh, other bit of information there is the overall work, uh, work week hours which we also expect to remain uh, unchanged at 34.5 hours now the the crucial the, the common uh, mistake i see or the common uh, kind of um, error i see on non-farm payrolls is the market focuses on the headline figure. Everyone's looking at are we going to beat or are we going to disappoint the 190,000 figure. And the market often has a knee-jerk reaction in one way, but then digests the other information. As I said, the headline figure we're expecting is 190,000 jobs to be added on the payroll, but last month's number of 228,000, that can be revised, and so can the previous month be revised. So we often have, we can't see, it's been common enough to see a scenario whereby, let's say for example, the headline figure smashes expectations and the market moves a certain way. The dollar, for example, might rally. But then tra traders realize when they look at the report in its entirety, they realize that the last, the previous months or even the previous two months numbers have been revised lower. All employment may have ticked higher or the, uh, and or the average earnings may have declined uh, as well or, or grew at a slower, a slower pace than expected. So my view is that all these figures should be taken in its, in its in total, in total entirety. Sure, the, the market often uh, has, a, has a, its initial knee-jerk reaction to the headline figure, but don't forget about revisions. And we also want to be hearing too about uh, the various different economic, we also want to be hearing about things like um, the unemployment rate, what is the unemployment rate doing, and also what is the uh, average earnings and in my view average earnings are sort of are, are actually probably the really uh, important figures here because the rate um, of the last number of years since the US economy has, been, has gone from recovery to, to getting momentum the rate at which uh, in jobs are being created in the US is, is, is moving along quite steadily but in my view the rate at which wage growth is taking up is languishing it's, a, it's kind of noticeably lagging behind the rate at which 
new jobs are being created. And if Americans aren't earning, aren't seeing real pickups in their wages, they're, they're, they're unlikely to come out and spend as much. Even though economic indicators, which I come out in a second, for all the United States have been fairly solid. My view is that my view is that we, you know, we we really would need to want to see the U.S. economy have a, have a decent enough lift in wages because if you're if you have more money in your pocket, you're more likely to go out and spend. Or at the very least, you, you or else at the very least, if the United, if the U.S. central bankers um, and politicians want to see the, the the U.S. economy kind of tick up to the kind of like uh, move up a gear in terms of its economic growth, that's what we want to see. So my view is that keep an eye out for, for the earnings figures. I will certainly be going through through those in, in fine detail when, when the numbers come out in about nine minutes time if you kind of recap on what has gone on in the united states over the past five or six weeks in terms of economic indicators if you, if you cast your mind back to last month um not to say that or even sorry even even yesterday rather we'll go back to yesterday when we saw the um adp figures come out and also we had the yeah the jobless claims figures come out at, with the yesterday the ADP figures come out. They come out. They normally come out on a Wednesday, but they come out on a Thursday because Monday was January first, a public holiday. So we, they came out yesterday at 1:15. You're, you're expecting a reading of 190,000, and it came in well above. It came in at 250,000, which, which is quite a decent beat, and it's quite a strong number. Also, um, shortly after that, we had the changes in the jobless rates. The jobless rate was supposed to drop uh, by 7,000 to. 240,000, but actually ticked up a few thousand to 250,000. So overall, it was still fairly decent numbers yesterday of the US, and that has kind of set the tone for a positive figure from the from the um, from the jobs report today. Now, there's broadly speaking, if you look at the kind of if you look at the uh, charts over the long term, they broadly move in the same line. If if ADP is gradually pushing higher and and jobless claims is gradually pushing lower, non -farm, the non-farm payrolls figures. The unemployment rate and the headline non-farm payroll figures usually move in the same direction. You can have some discrepancies from month to month, but generally speaking, they move in the same direction. So bearing in mind, last month we saw the ADP figure come in at 190,000, where the actual jobless claims came in uh, at 236,000. So there, there was a fairly sizable gap between the two. And uh, but, but broadly speaking, they are moving in the right direction. U.S. economists state that the U.S. would need to be creating about 200,000 jobs per month to really ensure that the economy keeps growing at its current rate. So anything in around the kind of 200,000 mark is deemed to be respectable. You want to be getting a bit worried if you're going to hit, let's say, the kind of you know 160, 150, 140, and anything that's at say 220 is respectable, and kind of say 240, 250 uppers is actually quite impressive. But if you look at, th if you kind of cast your mind back over the last few weeks, and take a look back at uh, some of the economic indicators we've seen out of the United States uh, in the last four weeks, ISM manufacturing uh, came in at 58.2, quite a strong reading there, given that anything above 50 is a is a rate of, uh, is, it tells us that the sector is in expansion. And that can, so it came in at 58.2, just ever so slightly down from the previous rating of 58.7. The ISM non-manufacturing was 57.4. Previously down from 60.1, still look quite a higher reading, even if it is expanding at a slow rate. CPI in the, in the US ticked up from 2% to 2.2%, so it's actually above the, the Fed's current target. Uh, but also, it is it, it, it is worth pointing out that the actual core CPI rate, which strips out come on, energy and commodity price and food prices out of it, declined from 1.8% to 1.7%. So it isn't that kind of as rosy as uh, as initially thought. But still moving in the kind of right, you know, nonetheless, it's moving in the right direction and something that the Federal Reserve will, will be happy about. Uh, retail sales, as I said recently, came in at 5.8%. Previously, uh, smashing, well, a decent increase and the previous rating of 4.8%, 4.9%. And then we, we had it just before Christmas, and uh, the, 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 kind of the third quarter revision of US growth came in at 3.2%, ever so slightly down from 3.3%. So... It is the U.S. economy is broadly speaking moving, ticking along nicely. Um, if you look at solid numbers from the from the, from the Philly Fed, solid numbers from the durable goods, and most recently the, the pending home sales of the United States uh, came in at a, at a ten-year high, and all the housing figures were quite strong out of the United States. 
uh, be it pending home, be it ex new home sales or uh, or existing home sales, all at you know quite multi-year high. So the U.S. economy is doing quite well. So we we got about five minutes on the clock just before we actually before we actually wait uh, for the for the numbers to come out. As always, um, if this is the, the first webinar of mine that you've actually ch tuned into, um, I'm happy that if you want to type in the ch in the chat box any markets um, you want to. You want me to have, have a quick look at? Um, I'll, I'll happy to do so. Once the numbers come out, I'll be looking through, you know, the, the FTSE and the Dow, the S and P. Look at a couple of dollar crosses. See how the price of gold has reacted. But this is essentially, um, this is essentially um, um, happy to kind of for you, for, you, for you guys to just just throw out the name of a, of, a, of a market for me to have a quick look at. Okay, so when you say can you can you point to the figures so we can follow, please? Well, uh, well, unfortunately, I've, I've I've just sifted through the economic calendar and actually got gone through it myself. But if you go into the economic calendar and just effectively scroll backwards and actually sift through the actual figures yourself, I just made a point of uh, being kind of effectively going to be prepared uh, as, as a as a point of being prepared for this webinar and actually kind of making you know, a, 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 jot, a jot down on my copy book of all the, ver of all the various numbers that have, of all the major ones that have come out in the last few weeks. But in the economic calendar, which I, have, which I have here up on the screen, if you just want to scroll through that, you can keep an eye out. Obviously, you can keep an eye out for the importance. Uh, you know, obviously, one, uh, one, the, the trip of rate is obviously, obviously the most, most important. But this year is the least important, and you can see here, judging by the flag, of which country the economic indicator is coming out of. So take a quick look now. We we got about three minutes left on the clock. Uh, let's have a quick look at how the uh, the European markets are. As you mentioned, the FTSE has hit a all-time high today. If you look at this, um, it's if you, it's been in. Even though that the FTSE 100 itself uh, was kind of struggling a bit over the summer time, and it also had a bit of a sell-off uh, as in other markets in November, the fact that it's actually going to have to hit a post a fresh record high today, clearing north of 7,700, pushing on today, really just just gives you an indication of just how bullish the actual sentiment is. What you can see here, looking at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, the market is pushing higher here, but we are see and we are seeing a, a, a slight decline in positive momentum. Um, and this could be the sign that we could see the market pull back a bit or perhaps even slightly turn over on itself. This was called um, this was what's called negative divergence, where the market is pushing higher, but the rate of change, uh, which the, the, the momentum indicator is actually ever so slightly declining. So what we're seeing here is that essentially markets are going up, which is which is obviously good and, and, and positive and bullish but the rate at which they're going up is actually de declining so it could be an early indication that we could see a bit of a pullback in the FTSE 100 and if we do see a pullback in the FTSE 100 we could be looking heading back down towards the recent lows in around the consolidation here in around 7,640 or perhaps even down to 7,600 uh, itself so we got one minute on the clock now just for, waiting for the numbers to come out I'll just make sure they open up the economic calendar to have everything loaded up. Just waiting now. They should populate now. Uh, we got we got just under twenty seconds to go here, or nineteen seconds to go for the actual number itself. Given that we're expecting 190,000 jobs to be created and the fact that the US economy has been doing fairly well recently, I suspect around 210, 205 uh, is, is my prediction on the headline figure itself. Unemployment to remain at 4.1. So the numbers have just come out now. Let's just wait for them to actually populate on the screen. One hundred and forty-eight thousand. Wow, that is a big miss. And as I said, said earlier on, that is actually sub kind of one fifty. That is something actually getting to be getting a bit worried about. Um, but on, we noticed there was a, an upgrade to the previous month's number. The previous month's number was two hundred twenty-eight thousand, and that was revised upwards to two hundred fifty-two thousand. So a decent revision uh, on on the previous month's number. 
unemployment steady steady eddy remained at 4.1 percent scrolling down here to the average earnings uh, we can see here the average earnings on that, that can't be right it's saying here I'm just going to double check that 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 that, that particular figure that seems a bit off to me and this figure hasn't been actually released yet uh, on the terms of the overall work hour weeks remained unchanged at 34.5 percent I'll just very quickly just look on my roller screen and see what the actual see if the other details were in terms of the hourly hourly so the average uh, earnings on a monthly basis and also on a yearly basis as I quick scroll down here now so on in terms of the in terms of the average earnings on a year-on-year -year basis they remained unchanged at 2.5 percent meeting expectations in terms of the average earnings on a month-on-month -month basis uh, they were expected to come in at 0.3 percent and they did come in at 0.3 percent so in line with expectations as I said unemployment remained steady at 4.1 percent and it was quite a quite a decent miss in terms of the headline figure but we did manage to get a decent enough revision to the previous month's number as well. So overall, I would say it's a kind of a mediocre sort of a middle of the road report. Um, it's good that earnings are continued are continued are continued to grow, particularly on a kind of month on month basis, uh, it, it, and that's something that's something to, to be positive about. But at the same time, it was a bit of disappointment that the, the headline figure came in so so much off, and especially when something in the kind of low hundreds, you kind of you know the kind of one hundred fifty thousand mark. Is something to be a, a bit concerned about all right let's see now how the markets have reacted to this i'll have a quick look now and see how for example the dollar index has taken the move i'll say volatility index well you can see there's a quite a severe sell-off in the u.s dollar so this is the u.s dollar index we're seeing here as soon as they obviously saw that figure the one the uh the, the figure which came in well below the 190,000 expectation. Uh, that when the, when the 148 figure came in, we can clearly see that there's a fairly sizable sell-off in the U U.S. dollar. But tra if traders realise that the rest, of the, the remainder of the report was actually reasonably positive, we could see a bit of a turnaround. This is potentially uh, what I was talking about at the top of the webinar when I was saying that, that traders often focus too much on the headline figure and then realizing that, that the remainder of the report is reasonably robust. It's not anything to get really overexcited about, um, but still earnings, unemployment and the revision were all fairly positive. So we could see a bit of a turnaround in the US dollar. I'll have a quick look now. Uh, so we obviously know that, that the, the dollar index as a whole has, has done quite badly on the back of that. Let's see what we can potentially expect out of the, U the euro versus the US dollar. Naturally enough, the euro has, has, uh, has pushed higher on the back of this. If you look at the wider trend uh, on the euro versus the US dollar, the euro yesterday got very, very close to the September high. And bearing in mind the September high, if the September high at one, which I believe is at 120.92, if that level gets taken out, because we're currently at 120.77, if that level gets taken out, we're, we're going back to levels not seen since December 2014. So if you take, if you go another, say, 20 pips higher from here on the euro dollar, we're looking at, you know, about fresh three-year highs. So I'll give you an indication of how bullish traders are on the euro versus the US dollar. Taking a look back to the hour, taking a look back to the hourly the daily chart on the euro versus the US dollar, we also saw quite a decent move higher from March up until September. A correction on the euro versus the dollar. Market pushed, but the market has been pushing higher since then. And this could be the day, given we have a bit of softer than expected headline number for non farm payrolls which takes us north of the September high and printing a new th uh, new three year high for the euro versus US dollar. It's been a solid upward trend for the last four months so buying on the dip has been a popular strategy for the euro dollar. If we do see any signs of the market pushing uh, pulling back we could find support in around here in around the kind of 120 region as we can see on a few occasions it provided support in the past only recently. If we move south of 120 we could even see some buying in around the November high which comes into play around 119.61 or even down towards the 119 area. Move to the upside on the euro versus the US dollar. We could be, there isn't really much to go on because it's we had such a, a severe sell-off back in the end of 2014. So we saw some price consolidation in around here, in around the, the 122 22 mark. Or then if, it, if that level is taken out, the next potential area to watch out for would be the high from from late September uh, of 125.69.
We'll have a look now at cable and see how cable is getting on versus the US dollar. I'll run through a few of the, the, the major markets. If there's anyone out there who wants me to have a look at a market that I haven't covered or I haven't mentioned yet as, a, as so far, feel free to type in the chat box and I'll have, happily have a look at it. We'll have a look now on the hourly chart. I suspect we're going to see a decent upward move in the, the pound versus the, the US dollar. So we're, we took out... Um, we took out the early morning high on the pound versus the dollar. We're now back at the high, um, back to Wednesday's high. And bearing in mind, if you look at how, how much of a positive run the, the pound has had versus the British versus the US dollar in the last few months, uh, the last, uh, it has quite a decent run. So we're still very much in the upward trend that we've been in. The high that we saw at the beginning of the week was about, about a three and a half month high for the pound versus the US dollar. We're still very much in that upward trend. If you draw a trend line from the, from the lows of, of March last year to the lows of August, we can see that fair enough, it was it was it, 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 we did see some movements through it on several occasions in November, but, we, but we're still firmly above that trend line uh, from the lows of March to through, through the lows of August 2017. So, so while we're north of this trend line here, I suspect we could see a continuation in the upward upward trajectory of the pound versus the dollar. Levels to watch out for the upside will be, will be the September high of 136.59, and then north of that, you'll be looking towards 137. And if you do see any kind of pullbacks, we could find support in around the kind of 135 region. And if, if we pull back to, towards the trend line, bearing in mind we may find that the market could move just south of the trend line but push back higher again, so be, be careful where you place your buy orders and also your stop, your, your stop orders. Uh, if, if we move to the downside, we could be looking at getting support at 134 or even down to the trend line support, which comes into play in around 133.50 or 133.60. Have a look now. Um, the big one to watch out for: big move in the dollar versus the Canadian U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Quite a se severe sell-off from the greenback. I'll have a quick look at the economic indicators that come out of Canada at the same time because it got overshadowed by the U.S. non-farm payrolls. If you can see here on the, uh, at half one, Canada, the, the employment change uh, smashed expectations. Uh, it came in just uh, uh, over 78,000 jobs uh, were created. The unemployment rate, the unemployment rate in Canada dropped from 5.9% to 5.7%, which is quite a, a sizable, which is quite a sizable, um, quite a sizable jump. And um, so we let, let's now take a look at the dollar versus the Canadian dollar, which is down quite a bit on the session. Uh, on the back of that, so it's kind of a, um, a kind of a double loss for the for the greenback in that the headline figure from the United States missed expectations and the Canadian numbers were very good. So take a look now at the dollar card. As we can see here, dollar card had quite a sizable sell off on the back of that. On a 15 minute chart, we can see just the the magnitude of the decline on the back of that. Going back to a daily chart here now. We can see that the market now has actually traded at its lowest level not seen since September. So we're talking about about a, over a three-month low for the uh, for the dollar versus the versus the Canadian dollar. So if we keep moving south from here, what we could potentially see, and if you look at the trend, has been pushing lower here. If you look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see a sizable increase in negative momentum. So the market's moving lower, the selling pressure and the, and the negative momentum is increasing too. So the momentum is with the bears on the dollar CAD. Move to the downside, we could be heading back down towards 123. And then if you take off that, back to, down towards 122, or perhaps even as low as the September low of 120.61. And if you do happen to push higher on the dollar versus the CAD, Areas to potentially keep an eye out for, for in terms of resistance, 125, and then also potentially in at the 100-day moving average at 125.93. Right, we'll be wrapping up the webinar now in a few minutes' time. I'll, I'll have a quick look at some of how the indices have reacted to this. I'll also have a look and see how, how gold has reacted. Um, but like I said, if there are any markets you want me to have a look at, feel free to shut them out. So we saw a nice de decline in the U.S. dollar. There's often a, a, kind of a, 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 a inverse relationship between the dollar and the price of gold. So the softness in the price of the U.S. dollar has made gold more attractive. And as, as we can see here, we saw a fairly de we saw a decent enough jump in the price of gold when those figures came out. If you look at the, at the price of gold, um, broadly speaking, it's, it's been moving higher for the past 12 months. Even though we did see a sell-off sell in November, it did manage to take out the October low here. 
Uh, ever since mid-December, the gold market has been pushing higher. It decisively broke north of 1300, the big psychological number, and then it, then it easily cleared the October high of 1306. And only only this week, only yesterday, did we see a fresh three and a half month high for gold. So, as you can see here, the gold market is, is quite strong. The US, the US dollar has taken a bit of a bruising today, so we could see an extension of this positive move that we've seen in the price of gold over the past few weeks. And if you do continue on this upward trend, area to keep an eye out for would potentially in around here, the 1334 region. We saw a lot of consolidation in around mid to late September. And then if you go north of 1334, we could be looking back up towards the September high of 1358. If the gold market does manage to uh, have, a, have, a bit of a pull, have a bit of a pullback, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold. So we could find support in round here, 1306. It's already acted as support previously in the last few in the last few days, and even we could see some buyers enter the fold in around the kind of psychologically important 1300 level. I'll have a quick look now. Uh, the FTSE 100, sure. So the instant reaction from the FTSE 100 uh, was actually one of actually, of actually a, a negative one. Uh, to be fair, it looks, it looks like the FTSE was actually kind of going through a bit of a profit taking, a bit of a sell off in advance of the numbers anyways. We have managed uh, to, uh, the market has managed to pull back some of the declines that incurred in the last few hours, in the last few minutes. Nonetheless, the FTSE is, is, continues to push higher here. The, the trend is clearly to the upside. We've had a decent trend upper trend for the last month we hit fresh record highs today that tells you all you need to know about the current sentiment as the old adage goes the trend is your friend until it comes to an end uh, what I will say is this as the market has been pushing higher here we have seen a bit of a decline in positive momentum so we may see a bit of a pullback we may even see a bit of a correction um, but nonetheless over the last few weeks I suspect we could see a continuation of this upward trend levels to watch out for to the upside would be say 7,800 Big kind of psychological number, markets like big numbers. And if we do see any moves to the downside, we may find some, some, some support from yesterday's low in around the 7,000, say around the kind of 7,670 mark, or even down as in around the 7,640 mark. Brent crude, sure, I'll have a look at Brent crude now. I look at the initial re reaction first of all. As you can see, same same with gold because gold traded in US dollars as is Brent crude. Uh, the weakness in the US dollar US dollar propped up the price of uh, of Brent crude. But the crude oil market has been in a solid upward trend over the last six months. Um, we hit fresh kind of two and a half year highs only yesterday, and as it's, as it's, as I was saying with the FTSE, it's in a solid upward trend. We're at multi year highs. You know, the trend is, is your friend until it comes to an end. The, the kind of popular strategy over the last few months has been to buy on the dip. Granted, we have seen some quite choppy trading. I've seen, seen, seen some quite some choppy and, uh, and aggressive um, pullbacks in the price of Brent. But nonetheless, the situation in Iran, um, freezing cold temperatures in parts of, North, parts of North America are all contributing into the kind of the rally we're seeing in the price of oil. So if we do continue to push higher on, on Brent, I suppose the next big, really big level to watch out for will be the 70 bucks per barrel level. And if you see any move to the downside, we could find support in around the 67.26 region or even down at $66 a barrel. But as I was saying, the trend over the last number of months for Brent has been very much to the upside. I'll have a quick look now and see how the Dow futures and the S&P futures have fared on the back of that. And then actually look, look to wrap up the webinar because we're just we're approaching quarter to the hour now. So the big picture for the United States has been a stellar run. Uh, uh, it seems kind of like deja vu at the, at the American indices are racking up fresh all-time highs. So the market is very much in an, in an, in an upward trend. Uh, we're comfortably up north of 25,000 on the Dow Jones. I'll have a look at a, a short-term a short, a short chart to see how things have fared off. As you can see here, the instant reaction was quite negative. Uh, but then afterwards, we're seeing a push higher in the price of the of the Dow Jones. This could be what I was talking about at the top at the top of the webinar, whereby people saw the jobs well below expectations, so they decided to take profit on the fantastic runs that they've had. And then they realise, hold on, wages are wages are decent. 
there was a decent revision to the previous boss number, and all the problems remained the chain, right, remained unchanged. So maybe, just maybe, this this report is actually a bit better than the initial uh, reactions warranted. In terms of levels to watch out for in the Dow Jones, uh, because we're kind of in, in uncharted territory, I suppose 6, 26,000 is going to be the, best, the next big kind of psychological number to watch out for. But I mean, realistically, you know, P traders are looking towards 25,000, 200, 300, so on and so forth. In terms of areas to watch out for, for potential um, to potentially buy into a market that, that pulls back, we did see that a consolidation in around the 25,100 mark, or even south of that, even down the 20, 25,050 re region. I'll have a quick look now at the S&P 500, and then we'll look to wrap up the webinar itself. Very similar in terms of the shape of the chart, uh, almost almost at a kind of 45 degree line, pushing higher and higher and higher uh, on a regular basis, racking up fresh all-time highs. We're set to we're set to open, we're set to create all-time highs on, on today's session. I'll have a quick look now at the S&P and see what things have done. Very very similar to what we saw on the chart for the for the Dow Jones, whereby the initial reaction was quite negative, and then afterwards, the traders realised that other aspects of the report were actually quite positive. So we're, we've we've uh, we've definitely come off the lows of the kind of post non-farm payroll reaction levels. Areas to watch out for to the upside. Uh, we're currently trading at two thousand seven hundred thirty-four. Traders traders like to, to look towards big figures, so. 2,740, 50, 60, so on and so forth. If we move, if we do see any kind of pullbacks, we may find some support in around this area here, 2,730, or perhaps even down towards the, the lows uh, of the past couple of sessions in around 2,000, in around the 2,720 mark. So uh, that's as a, in terms of the actual markets that we've covered. Uh, that's going to be it in terms of the, the markets that we've covered in today's trading session. Uh, I just want to also want to point out on our trading platform uh, what we do actually have throughout the day we, uh, we do very, very various different updates uh, so in the insight section which can be found under market pulse under insight section option second option down uh, we will we will have very different uh, economic updates throughout the day any uh, some of the articles that we write get posted to insight and they'll be uploaded there throughout the trading session also, there will be a video of this webinar available on Insight later on. Also, keep an eye out for the chart forum, which is the third option down on Market Pulse. Um, myself and my colleagues uh, will write a, a quick few hundred words or a few other characters on, on a particular chart, and we're also going to map out what we think the, in terms of, it, we, we point out the potential uh, important levels to keep an eye out for. That's updated on a daily basis. I just finally just want to draw your attention to other webinars that we have in the pipeline. So, uh, on, in the same place where you found this webinar, uh, we'll be hosting, as always, the Monday Market Webinar at 12.15. I'll be hosting that on Monday coming. It's starting at 12.15 uh, GMT. Uh, we'll be covering the major moves uh, in the markets and also keep looking ahead to the week ahead. So, please feel free to sign up for that. And on Monday evening at 1900 GMT, 7 p.m. UK time, uh, there'll also be a webinar on the foundations of, of technical analysis. And as, as a person who got who, who's, who has um, spent more and more time reading about technical analysis uh, and even got the qualification from the Society of Technical Analysts, uh, I would re recommend reading up on technical analysis. And if you can, tuning in to this webinar because it is going to be quite useful. And particularly if you're interested in short-term trading, knowing and understanding charts is a crucial part of short-term trading. Well, I do want to thank you for your patience. Um, I hope you have a good good weekend. I hope, I hope you, your, uh, your next week's trading goes very well. Thank you very much. Bye for now.